Good morning and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask all present to please respect the instructions given by our parish ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a social distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, further instructions will be given, and at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the usher's instructions for exiting from the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Hunt. Our gathering chant is number 471 in our CBW, Blessed are the pure in heart. Please stand. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see our God. The secret of the Lord is theirs, their soul is Christ's abode. The Lord who left the heavens, our life and peace to Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Irenaeus, bishop and martyr, and we continue in our, um, uh, in solidarity with the Holy Father's proclamation of the year of St. Joseph, uh, by continuing in our novena to St. Joseph. The theme of today's reflection, the seventh day, of the Novena is St. Joseph, a creatively courageous father. And the reflection is taken from an apostolic letter, the apostolic letter by Saint Francis, uh, Pope Francis of last year, uh, initiating the year of uh, St. Joseph. We should always consider whether we ourselves are protecting Jesus and Mary, for they are also mysteriously entrusted to our own responsibility, care, and safekeeping. The Son of the Almighty came into our world in a state of great vulnerability. He needed to be defended, protected, cared for, and raised by Joseph. God trusted Joseph, as did Mary, who found in him someone who would not only save her life, but would always provide for her and her child. In this sense, St. Joseph could not be other than the guardian of the church, for the church is the continuation of the body of Christ in history, even as Mary's motherhood is reflected in the motherhood of the church. In his continued protection of the church, Joseph continues to protect the child and his mother, and we too, by our love for the church, continue to love the child and his mother. Let us pray. St. Joseph, creatively courageous father, we ask that you intercede with your son, the savior of the world, that we may honor and cherish the youth and the elderly by defending, protecting, and caring for them as you cared for your son and the blessed Virgin Mary. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself. Where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Amen. And the suggested action for today is that we take a step toward interior healing by accepting our personal history and embracing the things in our lives that, that we did not choose. That we may worthily enter into this celebration today, we pause to call to mind God's goodness 
and to ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who called the bishop St. Irenaeus to confirm true doctrine and the peace of the church, grant, we pray, through his intercession, that being renewed in faith and charity, we may always be intent on fostering unity and concord. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The three visitors from the Lord set out from Mamre, and they looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to set them on their way. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, seeing that Abraham shall become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? No, for I have chosen him, that he may charge his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin! I must go down and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fear as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again, Abraham spoke to him. Suppose 40 are found there. The Lord answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then Abraham said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. The Lord answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then Abraham said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. The Lord answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A 
response to Psalm 103, the Lord is merciful and gracious. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. The Gospel of the Lord.
After listening to today's first reading, I think I'd never want to try to buy a used car from Abraham. He's quite the bargainer, the way he bargains with the Lord about the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah. That passage, as well as the psalm today, speak to us of the Lord's mercy and his goodness, that he doesn't want anyone to perish, but that he is also just, and that in his justice there are things that he condemns. The challenge for us is to be merciful like Abraham, but to seek always in our own lives to be just and to give to the Lord what is his due. In the gospel passage today, we see two, I would expect, very good-hearted people that want to follow the Lord, but I expect that Jesus, in looking at them, realizes that while their heart is good, maybe their stamina is not so good. He's pointing out to them that uh, what they're saying they wish to commit themselves to does require sacrifice. It does require a commitment uh, that means that at times uh, they will be homeless and at times they will have to leave uh, those that they love behind. The challenge for us in living our faith is to take seriously that commitment to put the Lord first and to seek in our relationships with others to be as kind and merciful as as he is while being just in the way that we live our lives. Certainly as we reflect on the life of Saint Joseph we see that to be the case and also in the life of the saint that today's uh, today whose memorial today we celebrate Saint Irenaeus of the early church. As we continue in our mass we ask for the intercession of St. Irenaeus and St. Joseph, that they will help us in living our faith faithfully just as they did. With confidence in God's goodness and recognizing our need of his assistance and grace if we are to be faithful, I invite you to please stand and join in our prayer of the faithful. We pray for our Pope and for all of our religious and civil leaders that they may always be open to God's guidance and that they may seek to lead with justice and mercy. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves and for all who have received the gift of faith, that having received so great a gift, we will always cherish it and seek to be faithful to our living out of our commitment as followers of Christ. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those for whom today is a time of difficulty and trial, for those who are sick, for those who are dealing with any type of oppression or persecution. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you today, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice we offer you with joy on the heavenly birthday of St. Irenaeus bring you glory, O Lord, and instill in us a love of the truth so that we may keep the church's faith inviolate and her unity secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Irenaeus you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Irenaeus, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom, you, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptism we are God's children and so with confidence we can pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, my roof but, but only say, say the word and my soul, soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. Bow towards the host in silence. Receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. <clears throat> the body of Christ. Amen. Our communion chant 6.4 in Celebrate in Song, Let Us Be Bread.
Let us pray. Through these sacred mysteries we pray, O Lord, give us your compassion. Give us in your compassion an increase of that faith which brought glory to the Bishop St. Irenaeus as he maintained it even until death. And may that same faith bring us, who truly follow it, justification in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need. and We are sure you will provide, so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross for the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not sustain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning chant number 517 in our CBW, Lord Jesus, we must know you. Touched.